Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Am I the A-hole and it's by user It was soap, dumbass. Am I the A-hole for cussing out my in-laws for going through my luggage? I recently got engaged and took some time off to visit our parents and start planning. The first stop was mine and then his. I suffer from chronic pain and take a variety of meds, which cause a decrease in appetite and nausea. I haven't disclosed my illness to my in-laws, but a few nights ago I could hear my future mother-in-law complaining about how I'm too good to eat what they cook. I let it go. Yesterday, my fiancé took me around his hometown. On the way back, he remembered to get beer, but we were already pulling into the driveway. I was tired, so he dropped me off. His parents were waiting for me in the living room, angry. Future mother-in-law says, You really think you can pull the wool over our eyes, don't you? You think you can bring drugs into our house? I was motioning to a seat because my legs hurt, so I wanted to sit down and try to understand what she was saying, but she stopped me with, No, no, you stand. How dare you bring this disgusting BS into our house? I tried to reach for my cell phone and she yelled at me to keep my hands at my side and continued saying, I don't care how legal this stuff is, we don't allow this garbage in our house. That's when she pulls out a plastic wrapped package and I immediately know what it is. She then says, my husband took a bite out of it and got sick. Now I'm pissed off because what she had in her hand was at the bottom of my luggage and then she starts going off about how many pills I take. Again, she wouldn't know if she hadn't gone through my stuff and how her son doesn't deserve a druggie. She takes my package and shows me where future father-in-law took a few bites and threw up soon after. It's been 10 minutes and my fiancé is back. His mom asks him if he knows about all the medication I'm on and how I brought pot into their house. He can't get a straight answer out of them about how they know about my medicine, but then glances at the package and just sighs, Mom, it's soap. It even says African black soap. He broke off a piece, headed to the kitchen and washed his hands with it, showing them the lather. Future mother-in-law fired back saying that she's never seen soap like that and that this doesn't explain the amount of medicine I take. They say they're justified in what they did because they want the best for their son and since it's their house, they can go through anyone's personal belongings at will. That was it for me. I let him have it. I started screaming and cussing because I'm exhausted and tired. I can't remember everything I said, but my throat has been a mess from all of the screaming. Future father-in-law tried to give me back the soap, but I kinda threw it at him, saying I didn't want his gum disease. Terrible, I know. We're staying at a hotel and not talking to his parents. I feel I could have gone about it better. I wanted a good relationship with my in-laws and we've always kind of gotten along. Now, I feel like I effed up badly. So, give it to me straight, Reddit. Am I the a-hole? Of course not, OP. You're not even close to being an a-hole. The only two a-holes in this whole situation are your future mother-in-law and your future father-in-law. And good on your future husband for standing up for you and actually taking you away from that space. It's their house so they can go through anyone's luggage at will? Go F yourself, you nosy I'm not gonna say that. Now I guess the only question I have here is, if they thought those were special brownies, why did he take a bite out of them? Maybe your future father-in-law wanted to get high because he really doesn't want to listen to his wife because she sounds annoying as F. Either that or the pain from his gum disease was just too much. Too soon? Nah. Now, going forward, OP, I think you need to talk to your future husband and see how you guys want to solve this. Do you want to give them another chance? A chance to apologize, that is, and then you see how the relationship would keep going? Or just go straight up no contact with them, regardless of whatever they say or do and they're not invited to the wedding. Look, OP, you can try as much as you can to have a good relationship with somebody. But if they're this annoying or they just simply don't want to have a relationship with you or a civil relationship with you, there's nothing you can do and don't waste your energy on that. And what is your judgment in this situation? Who's the a-hole? And also, how would you go about it if you were in OP shoes? Let me know in the comment section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. 
Just for now, 505 says, not the a-hole. Even if you feel bad about your reaction, think about the nerve they have to go through your personal belongings, eat your soap, which serves father-in-law right, LMAO, and complain about your medications? Your reaction was justified. They may be your in-laws and you want to have a good relationship, but they need to respect you as an adult to have that. Showing them right off the bat that you will not tolerate that level of disrespect and invasion of privacy is good. And also, good that your significant other stood up for you and supported you. And Opie responds, his relationship with them was getting better, but I think this ruined it. I was hoping our marriage would repair something. Way too optimistic. Manda Day 1106 says, not the a-hole. This was a major invasion of privacy and completely unacceptable. You were right to make it clear how upset you were with their behavior. I really hope your fiancé supported your position completely and made it clear to his parents that they were in the wrong and he supports you in this. And Opie responds, his relationship with them is strained, so he's definitely on my side. He really didn't want to tell them about our engagement, but I said it would be bad for us if they found out through the grapevine. A glass darkly double X says, quote, future father-in-law tried to give me back the soap, but I kind of threw it at him saying I didn't want his gum disease, end quote. Laughing smiley face. Coffee. Not the a-hole. You're kidding that they thought the soap was weed. Your reaction was completely understandable. They violated you by going through your things, desperately trying to find a reason to say why you aren't good enough. I don't think you can have a good relationship with them, but not because of your reaction. Seems like they're intent on using anything to turn their son against you. If it wasn't the weed soap or your blood pressure meds, it would be something else. Additional information from Opie's comments. I don't know who went through my luggage first or why they did it. Like, he was looking for something and found my soap? Was he looking for a snack? Were they trying to find something incriminating? Maybe he just wanted to be high since it's hard to deal with her. That's what I thought. And then it backfired when he got sick. I have no idea. I have so many questions, but I'm so tired of them. Although I do want to get along with my in-laws and not hold anything over their heads. I don't know if they saw the medication or the soap first. The soap was wrapped in plastic in a brown paper bag. That's how the person I buy from sells it. Like, if it had been a brownie, would they have just eaten it and not said a word? I am so lost. I'm trying to make sense out of it because there were clearly bite marks on it. It didn't even smell like food. Although, to be fair, it does look like a brownie. Here's a picture. This isn't my soap though, it's a picture from the website. Yeah, it kind of does look like a brownie. I know for a fact his mother won't apologize. She never does anything wrong. It's crazy. It's only been a day, but we haven't talked to them. A problem I'm having is that I don't remember what I said. When I get angry, I forget things, which is why I try not to let stuff get to me. I think I remember a few FUs and I said see you next Tuesday a couple of times. Well deserved. But all I can remember is the sound of my voice straining. After I was done yelling, he went to the room we were staying in and got us packed up. We left without saying a word. My fiancé hasn't said much, but I can tell he's stressed out and pissed. He did say sorry though. I honestly do feel bad because I know I said some bad things and throwing the soap at my future father-in-law was a bad idea. Now we're trying to figure out if we're going to try to go back over there or just enjoy the town and leave when it's time for our flight. Now, all of my pills are prescribed. I don't even like taking them and I don't know how I feel discussing my chronic pain with my future in-laws. It's a very personal struggle for me. I didn't even tell my parents about it for over a decade. They just assumed I was being a lazy teenager when I was really in pain. One thing I didn't mention in my post is that I'm black and he's white. I really didn't want to get into this, but I will. I think it is a race thing. It breaks my heart, which is why I've been trying my best to stay on their good side. Whenever my fiancé and I go on trips, I make sure to send them as many souvenirs as I can, and I'm constantly sending them postcards. Now, I asked my then boyfriend how his parents felt about our interracial relationship, and he kind of shrugged it off, saying if they didn't like it, they would have to get used to it. 
Then, when we first started dating and I met them, he told me that after, his mom kept asking about his ex fiance who cheated on him because she was such a nice girl. This was after meeting me. It's been on my mind since then, but I haven't really thought about it until what happened last night. Alright, well, the community judgment is OP is not the a-hole and they gave good reasons for that. I mean, not that we needed any, of course. Now, in the last bit of information, OP shared with us what we can assume is the reason why they don't like her, which is just sad and stupid, but the good thing is that her fiancé wants nothing of that and like he said, if they don't like it, they'll just have to get used to it or there'll probably be no contact. All in all, he's got her back, and that's what counts. So now, let's move on to the update to see how this story ends, but before that, if you're enjoying this story so far, please go ahead and give it a like, maybe write a comment if you want, or subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Now, let's move on with that update. Thanks to everyone for the advice and the PMs sent with encouragement. I was teetering on whether or not I did the right thing and if I was justified, but now I feel fine, kind of. We've been home for three days, but I really did a number with the traveling, so I've been resting. I talked it over with my fiancé and apologized for pushing the visit on him despite him saying he didn't think it would be a good idea. He was right and I regret not following his lead. Now, before moving on with the update, I want to tell you about my pain, since many of you had so many questions. I've been dealing with this pain since my early teens, and I've just lived with it. It was really bad five years ago, so I needed to find more relief, which resulted in more physical therapy and medicine. I'll probably have to start walking with a cane in a few years, but I'm doing okay now. It's hard to open up to people. Folks see me out and about and doing well and I'm scared of not being believed. Like, when I first started talking about the pain, crap sucks. If I start explaining to everyone that I'm constantly in pain, it sounds like an excuse. People start avoiding you when they think you'll either ruin the mood or be a downer. I've had to go home from plenty of get-togethers and outings because of the pain I was in. These days, I'm on good medicine so I can function, but I still get tired easily. It takes a lot of energy for me to get up in the morning. I was feeling good the day my fiancé and I went out, but I overdid it with the walking. And then I went from walking to being in a fixed position in the car and then to not being able to sit. So while his mom was having a go at me, I didn't try to explain myself until my fiancé came home. Plus, do you know how crappy it is to explain why I'm in my late 20s and have a bag full of pain meds? People constantly make me feel bad, usually new doctors, when they tell me I'm too young to take so many, and I just nod. Also, my condition means no kids for us. As for his parents, we haven't talked to them since. He says his mother isn't the type to apologize or think that she's wrong and that his father will go along with anything she says. There's no way they would give us a straight answer as to why they went through my luggage and what would lead a grown man to eat something he found. I suspect there is more to this story, but I'm leaving it up to my fiancé to decide how to proceed with his parents. However, in general, we've been trying to ignore the issue and just move on, but it becomes apparent very easily. He's been trying to keep me from his paternal grandparents because they're set in their ways and would probably say something out of line to me. I've accepted that. On the other hand, my fiancé didn't have a lot of experience with racism until he met me. We've gotten a lot of rude remarks in the streets from random people. I've had a black man yell out, all that ass and wasting it on a white man. It's been rough for us and we were hoping our parents would be like a safe haven. Mine have is not so much. Based on all of this, my fiancé says that as of right now, our only means of communication with his parents will be through mail or email. It sucks that it came to this, but he knows them better than I do. If I'm being honest, I think he was looking for a way to break contact and this was the cherry for him. They had to find some reason to hate me other than being black, I guess. No idea why they thought going through my luggage would be a good idea. I roll. We haven't talked to them since and it's been quite lovely actually. It's like a load has been lifted off of my fiancé's shoulders now that he doesn't feel obligated to talk to his parents anymore. Additionally, we're planning on living in the States, which I'm sure burns her up because she wants him to remain in Canada. But there are more job opportunities for his field where we live compared to where his parents live. 
Finally, I'm fine with being called an a-hole as this is the sub for it, but some of you all had had a lot of nerve calling me a druggie and a downgrade for my fiance based on the medicine I take. Not cool. And to all of you who were genuinely trying to help, thank you. Well, OP, it's not a fully, fully happy update, but it's a load off your shoulders update, which is of course good because now you guys can just continue planning your wedding however you want to have it, and you don't need to worry about your in-laws making a scene or anything like that. So here's wishing you both the best in the future. Thank you so much for sharing and take care, OP. And now let's finish this video with a mood booster post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance, and it's by user A Quiet Borderline. You need to leave my car alone. If you say so. This is not my story, but my friend, Adams. Adam is a retired police officer, and this takes place in the mid-90s, back when Adam was a beat cop, maybe a year or two into his service. At the time this story takes place, a firebug had started several businesses over the course of a three-month period. The fires were put out, but they were getting bigger and bigger, causing thousands of dollars in damage. Everyone was on edge, and the police were patrolling the area every night to try and catch Mr. Firebug. On this particular night in the middle of February, Adam and his partner Rick drew the short stick and thus were assigned to patrol part of the area. While on patrol, he notices a classic Mercedes-Benz pulling up to a house and a familiar lady dressed in a thick fur coat steps out. He groans. It's the wife of a local business owner that every officer in this town has had the displeasure of ticketing for various parking and traffic violations. It would have been fine if she were a nice lady or something, but no. Her three default sentences were, Do you know who I am? Where's your manager or supervisor? And I'll have your job. Seriously, she was a Karen before Karens were even a thing. Rick points out to Adam that Karen had parked right by a fire hydrant, par for the course. Adam gets ready and steps out of the squad car. Good evening, Mrs. Entitled Ma'am, Adam said. What are you doing here? Karen bellowed. Adam guessed that's the Karen version of the word hello. So he replies, working the beat. You do know you parked next to a fire hydrant. So? Karen said, and Adam said, I'm suggesting you move it before I write you a ticket. I'm not in the mood for extra paperwork tonight. To this, Karen fired. Listen, you need to leave my car alone or I'll have your job. With that, Karen storms off to the house, goes inside and slams the door. Adam thought, if you say so, and proceeded to check the outside of the car for any more violations and wishing that being a bitch was a federal offense. As he's putting the ticket under the windshield wiper, the call everyone's been dreading comes on the radio. A fire alarm has been triggered. The address? Right across the street. Adam looks over at the building and can see a faint orange glow in the windows on the second floor. He reports the glow. He and Rick get ready in case Mr. Firebug decides to cross their path. Several officers arrive and set a perimeter around the building as the glow gets brighter and brighter. Unfortunately, by the time the fire department gets there, a flashover happens and all the windows on the second floor get blown out. It was so hot that Adam felt sweat form on his face. The fire department needs to get the hoses set up, but Karen's car is in the way. Using safety hammers, they break the windows and run the hoses through, getting everything set up in record time. During all of the chaos, Karen comes out and she sounds like a banshee who has swallowed an air raid siren. She runs over and tries unhooking the hose from the hydrant. What are you doing? My car is ruined! She cried. It took two officers to restrain her and bark at her to go inside and let everyone do their jobs. She actually listened and returned inside. Adam spent the rest of his shift helping with the fire and investigation. It was close to dawn when he returned to the station to finish up. All he wanted was to go home and crawl into bed. That's when his supervisor called Rick and him over and told them that Karen had reported several thousand dollars worth of damage. Not only had her windows been broken, but water had gotten in and froze because it was, again, the middle of February. The supervisor asked them what happened and they reported everything. Fortunately, the dash cam caught a recording of the event. The supervisor shook her head, laughed and said, 
Well, you had nothing to do with the car getting damaged, so I consider this closed. A few weeks later, they caught the firebug, a different business owner who was trying to commit insurance fraud. He figured that if several other buildings caught fire, nobody would think he was responsible for burning down his own business. Wow, genius. Unfortunately, Karen never seemed to learn her lesson, so she went back to racking up tickets and being a thorn in the police's side. She did have to pay for the damages and the ticket Adam gave her. Well, Adam left her car alone, it wasn't towed or anything, but it's on her. Thanks for sharing, OP. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.